and we're back. Uh, all right, so a for loop, I'm gonna comment all these out. So a for loop that displays the numbers in a range. This is for x in range 10, print x. That's all I wanted for that one. Displays each number in a, or each letter in a string for ch in, now who knows why I picked ch? Character, yep. Uh, what? Yeah, character. Well, it does, once you get into further, once you get into more complex for loops, uh, especially in our video game, uh, we do a lot of for loops. If you don't, if everything is X and Y, you get really confused really quickly. So it is really good to, from the beginning, from the get go, understand that this for loop is dealing with string characters. I need my, I need this variable to represent that. Or if I'm going through elements in a string, I might do LM, E-L-E-M, short for elements, that sort of thing. So for CH in Python, print CH. Now this is this one was, I think, the most, con the, the hardest one for the class. So the number of times the user specifies any time, almost any time the word user is in a question, you need an input. Like almost any time. Uh, so an input, so I'm gonna do times is input how many times, I'm just gonna question mark. Now, the thing I didn't tell you about range for x in range, this number has to be an integer. It cannot be anything else. It can't be a float because how many times do you reiterate one to 10 and a half? Do I do 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5? So is there 150 iterations in, you know, do I do every point one? Or do I do every point zero one? Or do I do every point zero 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 one? Or do I do every one and a half? Like, so it needs to be a whole number. Period. It can't. It can never be anything else if you're doing range. So I can either make this an integer here, and do times, and then print x, or I can do for x in range times print x and have have it like this so either way these two would be correct now do you want to be not cheeky but if you want to just be like I can even I can make that even I can make that two lines of code at least I think you can copy Actually, I should copy this, copy, paste, copy, paste, comment those out, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So, do you guys understand why this works? Yes. Can you explain it to me, Carter? Number three. Yeah, why this? Why, why why does this work? Why don't I get an error? Like I'm typing in a string, aren't I? No, because um of the range and the integer is core that you're looking at. The, so whatever you type in that input automatically becomes an integer, and then also uh, after becoming an integer, it will isn't the other range. Exact. Perfectly right. I type in a string right here. It then, whatever I type in gets integerized, changed into an integer, and because a range needs an integer, my code works. So you can do this. The reason, depending, again, depending on how you're writing your code, a lot of what I say is do it this way, don't really do it this way. It really depends on how you write code. I tend to write code 
a variable, I, de I declare a variable and then I use that variable later. I tend not to do it this way because if I ever need that variable again, I, I would have to ask them for it again. I don't necessarily want to do that. I want, how many times do you want to play this game? Five times? Okay, I'm going to store that because if I ever need your input again, right, I need to, they wanted to play it five times. Out of the games they won, they, out of the games they played, they won three. So they got a 60% win, you know, 60% of the time they win. I don't want to then ask them, how many games did you play? I just want to take, listen, they played the game five times and then I can keep track of how many wins or losses. And then at the end, I can then go five minus wins equals losses. Make sense? So typically don't code this way because odds are you're going to need how many times they played the game later at some point in your code. Does that make sense? You guys have any questions? None whatsoever. Wow, you guys are really smart. I'm digging it. Um, so what we'll do after the break, I'll go through the book, make sure we cover everything that the book says, um, which I really don't think is much more. Uh, and then I think I'll give you guys the practice questions, the end of the chapter three uh, on Friday. I'll officially assign it, although if you get it done beforehand. And then we may spend some more time. You guys want to spend, actually, I have a quick question. Poll of the class. Do you guys want to go over more for loops and while loops? I'll come up with some practice questions and see if you guys can get those down. Or we can do more about the video game, the more game in class. So who wants to do more practice problems with while and for loops? Raise your hand. Okay, and who wants to work on the video game? I want to do both. Okay, well how about this? How about this? What if I gave you guys two or three practice problems that are on your own, right? They're optional as homework to work on and then I'll answer any questions tomorrow and we'll spend rest of the hour on the video game. Those of you who want to do the practice questions, how's that? If I give you a couple to do at home, and then maybe some time tomorrow. Who doesn't have school tomorrow? Oh, then that's perfect. How about I just give you guys some practice problems to do off? Wait, that means, what am I doing tomorrow? No, if you guys have off-campus learning day, I'm in service. That's what I thought, but... Yeah, it's where teachers become better teachers, and we learn from other teachers. I have learned a lot, actually. No, even though I'm actually, my contract states that I am 27% Teacher, 73% staff. Yeah, because I teach three classes a semester, uh, three classes a year as opposed to 10. Because a, a full time teacher teaches five classes each semester. I teach one class this semester and two classes next semester. So I, you should get out of there. No, part of, no even, if you are a, even if you are a part time teacher, you still have to attend all of these in services and things like that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that will be the, the uh, off-campus learning day will be practice questions dealing with while and for loops. On Monday, I'll assign the uh, chapter review. No, on Friday, I'll assign the chapter review. It'll, do, it'll be due Monday. Monday will be a day of questions. If you guys have zero questions, awesome. But there'll be a quiz probably on third on next Tuesday, just on chapter two, right? Which is just basically loops, um, uh, loops and random. 
and then Thursday we'll hopefully depending well, depending on how much time we uh, how much we get done today we'll spend a little bit more time on our video game and then Friday uh, we'll do a little bit there's some stuff that's not covered in the book that's covered in my old book uh, that I want to go over with you guys and then next a week from Monday we'll start on functions hopefully so, schedule subject to change based on me okay that is it